Today in this video, we're gonna be making a full week of weight loss meal prep. I try to get all my meals prepped for the week in about one hour. I'll show you exactly how I do that. We'll be making breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for five days. I created this meal plan specifically to help you to kickstart your goals, get into better shape. I'm gonna show you how I've used meal prep to save time, to get healthier, and to lose weight without counting calories. I lost 40 pounds doing this, but more importantly, I feel healthier and I have more energy when I eat healthier. When I have a busy schedule, it can be really easy to pick up unhealthy eating habits. So meal prep has really helped me to stay on track with making healthier food choices. I've created these meals and put together this meal plan specifically to be healthier, balanced, more filling and to give more sustained energy. And I've created it so that you don't have to count any calories. You don't need fancy containers for your meal prep. You can use anything to store your meals in, but it has to be airtight. Using airtight containers is really important to keep the meals fresh. All of the recipes are really simple and easy. Two breakfast options, two lunch options, two snack options, and two dinner options. To reduce cooking time even more, you can also double the ingredients for one recipe to make more of that, and just make one option for each meal time instead of two. I also have a free grocery shopping list to go along with this video for you. It's totally free, it's on my blog. I'll have that linked below for you. You can go download it and you can use it to go along with this video. This week of meal prep is from my ebook, Fast Weight Loss Meal Prep for Women. I'll have that linked below for you too. You don't need it to follow along with this video though, so don't worry. There are four full weeks of meal prep and healthy recipes in my ebook. This is the fourth week. My ebook is both a four week weight loss meal plan with multiple meals and recipes for each week as well as a meal prep recipe book. It can be used as both. I will link that below for you as well as the free grocery shopping list. Don't forget to download that. So in the ebook, there are so many substitutions and alternatives for lots of ingredients that I use. I'm gonna show you how to make all the recipes in this video gluten and dairy free, and I will be showing you vegan alternatives for anything that is not vegan. This meal plan is based on 1,400 calories per day, but I will show you at the end how you can easily tweak the meal plan to get 1,200, 1,600, or 1,800 calories per day. Each meal will be roughly 400 calories and each snack will be roughly 200 calories. So you can mix and match anything that you like. I recommend starting with a higher amount of calories even if you're trying to lose weight. Remember, it's about the small habits and being consistent with those small habits over time that builds up and creates real results. This is one of the reasons why meal prep has helped me so much at certain times in my life. It helps me to be consistent with healthier habits. But yeah, let's just get started. Meal prepping time can be reduced by doing one simple thing. Always start by prepping the food that takes the longest amount of time to cook. We're gonna begin the meal prepping process today by roasting the sweet potatoes and the bell peppers. Before you start, remember to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, about 200 degrees Celsius. You can start by lining a baking tray with some baking paper, rinsing the sweet potatoes and cutting them into thin slices. You can use about 345 grams of raw sweet potato, that's just over 12 ounces. And when it's sliced up, add the sweet potato to the baking tray. Then I'm slicing up about 300 grams of red bell pepper, that's just over 12 ounces. You can add that to the baking tray too and add a quick spray of cooking oil before tossing it. I like to add some dried oregano, salt and pepper and roast that for about 30 to 40 minutes or until it's cooked. And once the sweet potato and bell pepper are cooked, you can leave them to cool fully before storing them. Step two, we're gonna start cooking the potato and pinto bean curry. You can chop about 390 grams of potatoes into medium-sized pieces and add them to a pot. This is about 14 ounces. Then slice up about 300 grams of mushrooms and add them to the pot too, which is just over 10 ounces. To that, you can add one cup of unsweetened coconut milk. The one I'm using is about 45 calories per cup. Take note that canned coconut milk is much higher in calories, just FYI. I'm also adding the juice from one lime, some salt, some pepper, and also one teaspoon of curry powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a pinch of ginger powder. You can get that cooking on the stove and cover it with a lid so that the potatoes cook nicely. Oh, and I forgot to add the onion in while I was filming this. I usually add this to the pan first and let it brown a bit in the pan before adding the other ingredients. This helps to add great flavor. I use half an onion for this recipe. So cut that up, get that in, I had to put mine in afterwards and then save the other half of that onion for a recipe that we're gonna do just now. I also add about three cups of hot water to the pot after this and you can add even more if you need. In total, I add about four to five cups of water while it cooks. Next, we're gonna cook the brown rice. 
You can add one and one third of a cup of dry brown rice to a small pot with about four cups of hot water. You can bring that to a boil on the stove and then reduce the heat to a simmer. Cover it with a lid, let it simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes until it's fully cooked and then you can add more water if you need to. This amount of rice is for all of the recipes that we're going to be making today that need rice. And then once it's done cooking, you can remove it from the stove and let it cool. Now we're going to bake some healthy snack cookies. They're so easy to make. In a small bowl, mix two teaspoons of chia seeds together with two tablespoons of water. You can let the chia seeds soak for about five minutes until the consistency becomes gel-like. Then to a mixing bowl, you can measure a quarter cup of peanut butter, two tablespoons of desiccated coconut, two tablespoons of coconut sugar, and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Add a very small pinch of sea salt to that too before mixing everything together. I actually really like to use crunchy peanut butter for this recipe. You can use smooth or crunchy. And then once the chia seeds have soaked, you can add them to the rest of the ingredients before mixing it again. It comes together really quickly with just a few ingredients. So what you're gonna do is turn the oven down to 360 degrees Fahrenheit, about 180 degrees Celsius. Even if the vegetables are still busy cooking, turn it down. Line a baking tray with a baking sheet and then take a tablespoon amount of the cookie batter at a time. Roll it between your palms to make a small cookie dough ball and then you can add that to the tray. Keep doing this until all of the batter has been used up, dividing the batter to make three equal servings of cookies. This recipe usually makes four cookies per serving. That's about 12 cookies in total. And once the baking tray has been filled with the cookie dough balls you can gently press each one down onto the tray with the back of a fork this gives it a cute little cookie shape and you can bake those in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes and once the cookies are ready just leave them to cool and set fully before removing them from the tray or else they will break and then after that you can store them in the refrigerator to keep them fresh step five we're gonna cook some chicken drumsticks. If you wanna make the vegan plant-based option, then skip the step. And I'll show you how to make this meal vegan later on in this video. Add the chicken drumsticks to a small medium frying pan with a quick spray of cooking oil. You can use four 60 gram drumsticks or about two 120 gram drumsticks. That's just a rough guideline, about 240 grams in total. That's about eight and a half ounces. You can season the chicken drumsticks on each side with salt, pepper, a pinch of cane pepper, chili powder, onion powder, oregano, a squeeze of lime or lemon juice, that's what I like to do, and repeat that on each side. I love lots of seasoning. I apologize, I did get really confused while filming this, I don't know why. What I'm showing you here is really big chicken drumsticks. Um, so you would have like two really big ones or four smaller ones. And then once I've got it on the stove in the pan, I add about a tablespoon of coconut aminos or soy sauce. This is gonna help to make it nice and browned and tasty and delicious. Cover the pan with a lid and cook it over medium heat on the stove, turning the drumsticks every few minutes until they're browned and nice and cooked. You can add a little splash of water to the pan, just a tiny bit to avoid burning and you can cut into one of the chicken drumsticks to see if it's fully cooked. Try not to overcook it because that will make it tough when reheating. Once cooked you can leave the chicken to cool fully before storing in the fridge. Step six, we're actually so far along already. We're going to finish cooking the potato and pinto bean curry. Once the potatoes are soft you can add the rest of the ingredients in. Cut about 300 grams of green beans into short pieces, that's about 10 ounces, and drain and rinse some pinto beans before measuring out one and a half cups and adding them to the pot. You can also use one and a third of a cup of chickpeas instead of the pinto beans. Either works, I've used both, they're both good. And then let everything simmer until it's fully cooked and you can add a little bit more water if you need to. Once the curry is done, you can remove it from the stove, let it cool before storing it. Step seven, we are so close to being done, just hang in there. We're gonna make some veggie rice. This is really easy, don't worry. We're using the other half of that onion now that we saved, chop that up and add that to a separate medium large frying pan with a small amount of cooking oil spray. Cook that over a medium to high heat for a few minutes until it's slightly browned, not burned. Adding a small amount of water if you need to, to avoid burning it. I remember this time. <laughs> it's a really important step in this recipe. Adds lots of flavor. Next, sauce up about 200 grams of mushrooms and about 200 grams of bell pepper. That's about seven ounces of each. And add them to the pan with the onion with some salt, some pepper, some onion powder. I like to use one teaspoon of onion powder and about two teaspoons of oregano. 
Then you can cut up 200 grams of green beans, that's about seven ounces again. And I add that to the pan with the mushroom and the bell pepper once they're almost fully cooked to avoid overcooking the green beans. And then add the juice from about one lime. Once the brown rice is fully cooked, you can measure out about one cup and add it to the pan with about one tablespoon of coconut aminos or soy sauce. So if you're making the vegan option, you can add the black beans to the pan now with the veggie rice as the replacement for the chicken in the meal. You can use about one and two thirds of a cup of drained rinsed black beans for two portions or two meals instead of the 240 grams of chicken drumsticks. Toss everything together in the pan until it looks ready. And once the veggie rice is cooked, you can leave it to cool fully before storing it in airtight containers. Keep checking those chicken drumsticks um, just keep tossing them in the pan, remove them from the stove when they're cooked. Step eight, we are gonna quickly prep some tuna salad for the easiest instant healthy sandwiches. You can take one can of tuna that's in salt water, drain it and add it to a bowl, about 140 grams, or drain and rinse and add two thirds of a cup or 250 grams of pinto beans for a vegan option. If you use the pinto beans, you can smash them roughly with the back of a fork. To that, you can add two tablespoons of mayonnaise, vegan or regular mayonnaise, both work at about 100 calories per tablespoon. You can also add salt, pepper and oregano. I use about a teaspoon of dried oregano and the juice from one lime to the tuna or the pinto beans and mix everything together. You can set that aside for now. We will finish that soon, but it's basically done. Okay, step nine, we're so close now to being done. This is really easy. We're gonna prep some overnight oats, basically the easiest thing ever. To start, I'm peeling and smashing three medium bananas with the back of a fork in a bowl. I'm using three glass jars and measuring out about half a cup of dry rolled oats to each one. Next, I'm adding two teaspoons of chia seeds as well as a pinch of cinnamon to each jar and then dividing the smashed banana between three jars so that there's roughly one banana in each one. I'm also adding about half a cup of water to each jar and mixing everything together put those aside for now we're gonna finish them soon step 10 we're gonna make some really easy smoothie prep it's so much quicker if you just prep this all together you can start with two Ziploc bags or any reusable bag or container. After filming this, I actually got some silicone reusable bags, which I'm gonna be using from now on. But as I showed you guys many times before, you can wash and reuse Ziploc bags to prevent excessive plastic waste. I got this bamboo plastic drying rack on Amazon to do that. I'm measuring out about one and a half cups of frozen mango pieces to each Ziploc bag with one scoop of protein powder to each one. You can use any vanilla protein powder. I like to use this vegan one sweetened with stevia. It's about 110 calories per scoop for reference. You can use one that's roughly 100 to 120 calories per scoop. I'm peeling and adding half a small to medium avocado to each bag. That's roughly 60 grams to each bag, one avocado in total. And then I'm adding two tablespoons of dry rolled oats to each bag. This adds more healthy carbs, more fiber, and helps to make the smoothies more filling to keep you fuller for longer. Lastly, I'm adding a small handful of baby spinach to each of the two Ziploc bags. You don't even taste it, don't worry, but it adds some more vitamins, some antioxidants, some more fiber. Okay, now is the really fun part. This is where we're gonna start to see everything come together. It's the easiest part. It's the most satisfying part. It really comes together so quickly now, so don't give up yet. Breakfast one, banana and peanut butter overnight oats we're basically done. Once all of your overnight oats jars are prepped, cover each jar with an airtight lid, so easy. Now you can either mix some peanut butter into the overnight oats by measuring out one tablespoon into each jar, or you can save it and add it for a topping to your overnight oats. I'm showing you the topping version. You can measure out one tablespoon of peanut butter, cover each jar and each container with a lid and store all of the overnight oats jars in the fridge. Breakfast two the green mango and vanilla protein smoothie prep. For the smoothie prep, once all of your ingredients have been divided between the two Ziploc bags, just tightly seal the bags, close the containers, store them in the freezer until you're ready to use them. They are done. We are done with two things. Snack one, the healthy peanut butter coconut cookies. Oh, these are so good. 
so good. You can store them between three small reusable Ziploc bags or three airtight containers. This recipe makes about 12 cookies in a batch, which makes about four small cookies per snack. And you can store the cookies in the fridge to keep them fresh. Snack two, the apple and yogurt snack. Using two small reusable airtight containers, you can measure out one cup or a 100 calorie serving of your favorite kind of vanilla yogurt to each container. I'm using two ready to go and sweeten vanilla coconut yogurts that are close to 100 calories each, doesn't have to be exact. Then I've got two apples to go with the yogurt for these snacks, super simple. Just store the yogurt containers and the apples in the fridge until you're ready to eat them. Lunch one, so that tuna salad mix that we set aside or the pinto bean mix, you can divide that equally between two small reusable containers to make two portions. We're gonna make these really easy sandwiches. So I'm using two slices of bread per lunch, two lunches, so that's four slices of bread in total. For a calorie reference, I'm using a bread that is roughly 100 calories a slice. I've got two examples of bread you could use, this whole grain rye Bavarian bread, or this gluten-free three baker's bread. Both breads are roughly 100 calories per slice. You can use any bread that you like though. Lastly, what I do is I store a small handful of baby spinach or mixed greens and four cherry tomatoes between two reusable bags to make two small servings. I know this looks kind of funny, two cherry tomatoes and a small amount of lettuce in each one. You'll see why when we put the lunch together on the day. You can just do this on the day if you like. I'm showing you how to pre-prep everything beforehand. Okay, so cover all the containers with airtight lids, seal all the Ziploc bags, and store everything in the fridge to keep it fresh. And that is done. Lunch two, the hummus sweet potato and brown rice salad. Once the roasted sweet potatoes and peppers are fully cooked and have cooled down, you can serve them between three containers. Then serve one and a half cups of the cooked brown rice between three small containers, or you can put that in the same containers that the vegetables are in. So that's half a cup of rice to each container. And then using another three small containers, you can measure out a quarter cup of hummus to each one to make three servings of hummus. That's about three quarters of a cup in total. This is usually about one small container of store-bought hummus for me. Now we're gonna make the easiest salad dressing, starting with three small airtight containers to store the salad dressing in. Measure out one teaspoon of olive oil and one tablespoon of coconut vinegar or rice vinegar to each one. Then you can add lime or lemon juice to each container. I use one lime between the three servings and then some salt and some pepper. Mix that all together, very easy. Now you can use another three containers or Ziploc bags to store one cup of cherry tomatoes and a big handful of baby spinach or mixed lettuce into each one. This will be the base of the salads. You can also use one medium sized tomato instead of the cup of baby tomatoes for each one. But then you'll need to cut the tomato on the day that you use it. So the cherry tomatoes are easier for meal prep. So for each meal, you'll have a bag of salad greens and tomato a small salad dressing, some hummus, some brown rice, and some roasted vegetables. Once everything has cooled fully, you can cover all the containers, seal all the bags, store everything in the fridge to keep it fresh. This is one of my favorite lunches at the moment. The vinegar dressings really make the flavors pop, so don't skip it. We're basically done now, so close. The veggie rice with spicy chicken drumsticks. Once the vegetable rice, and the chicken are both ready. You can divide the chicken drumsticks between two containers and the veggie rice between two containers so that you have two servings of each. The chicken looks so good. If you did the vegan option, which I do do sometimes, it just depends on what I feel like, you will already have mixed the black beans into the veggie rice. So you can just serve that between two containers and it's ready to go. Once everything has cooled fully and is ready, you can cover the containers with etat lids, store them in the fridge. I just did one serving of the vegan option just to show you what it would look like because it looks very different to the chicken one in this recipe. Both are good. Okay, the very last thing, dinner two. The pinto bean and potato curry with brown rice. Once the curry is ready, 
just give it a quick taste test. Sometimes I like to add an extra teaspoon of curry powder, a little bit of extra salt and pepper. Then you can serve it between three medium sized containers to make three portions. Then you can serve one and a half cups of cooked brown rice, also between three small containers. So that's half a cup per container to make three rice portions. And once everything is cooled fully, you can cover all the containers with airtight lids, store it in the fridge, and that is it. We are done. Meal prepping is always a little bit of effort, but once you're done, it feels so amazing to have all your meals prepped for the week. You don't have to worry about all the cooking and so many dishes and all the cleaning for the rest of the week. Now I am gonna show you how to put everything together on the day, how to heat it, how to eat it. Okay, so breakfast one. On the mornings, you're gonna eat overnight oats for breakfast. Just grab your overnight oats jar from the fridge and give it a quick stir. If the consistency is too thick, that sometimes happens, you can just add an extra little drop of water or milk and stir it in. I like to do almond milk. You can top that with the peanut butter if you didn't already mix it in during the meal prep stage. And you can eat it with a spoon right out of the jar. You can serve it in a bowl. You can also heat it up really quickly in a little pan on the stove. Just pull the oats into a small saucepan and stir it really quickly over a medium heat until it's heated that's it you can top it with the peanut butter it's really good so easy breakfast two the smoothie prep on the mornings you're gonna have a smoothie this is so easy you just take one of the frozen smoothie packs out of the freezer pour the mix into a blender with about half a cup of water or as much water as you need you can add a few ice cubes in if you want to blend it till it's smooth pour it in a glass eat it and enjoy so simple quick and easy Snack one, the healthy peanut butter coconut cookies. I love these so much. The snack is ready to go. At snack time, you can just get the cookies from the fridge. You can pack them in your lunch in the morning to take with you wherever you're going, or you can snack on them at home, at your desk, in front of the TV, whatever works for you. Snack two, for the apple and yogurt snack, you can serve the yogurt in a bowl and chop the apple up. I like to chop the apple up on the day to keep it fresh. Optionally, you can add a quick sprinkle of cinnamon on top if you're at home. Alternatively, just pack the yogurt and the apple in your lunch together with a spoon and enjoy it at school or work. Lunch one. For the tuna salad sandwich, on the day you can lightly toast the bread if you want to, that's optional, I like to do that, and spread it with the tuna salad mix or the pinto bean mix onto each slice of bread. It's so easy when it's all pre-prepped and then you can take the baby spinach or the leafy greens, add them on top of the sandwich, cut the cherry tomato in half if you want to, put it on top, eat it and enjoy it's so so easy to do and if you want to take it with you anyway you can just make it a closed sandwich and put it in a lunch box lunch to the salad with everything pre-prepped this is a pretty gourmet lunch that's basically instant quickly rinse the baby spinach and the lettuce mix and the cherry tomatoes if you want to add them to a plate bowl or lunch container to take with you if you want to eat it later that day you can add the roasted sweet potato and bell pepper into the salad as well as the cooked brown rice you can add the hummus to that basically you're just throwing everything together on the day and then you can add the salad dressing to that before tossing it it's so so easy to throw together just before lunch or you can do it in the morning if you want to take it with you to school or work. Dinner one, the veggie rice and the chicken or the black beans. You can reheat your meal any way you prefer. I recommend reheating the chicken at a low temperature in the oven or using a frying pan to quickly heat it to avoid drying out the meat. So you'll wanna make sure you don't overcook the meat on the day that you make it. You can preheat the oven to about 275 degrees Fahrenheit, 135 degrees Celsius. Cover the chicken and place it in the oven on a baking tray lined with a baking sheet for about five to 15 minutes. It's checking every five minutes until it's heated through. Make sure you don't overcook it. Alternatively, you can choose to heat the chicken in a frying pan over a low to medium heat. Cover it with a lid to retain, you know, the tenderness. You can heat the veggie rice in a pan covered with a lid over a medium heat, tossing it every now and again until it's heated. And if you made the black bean vegan option, just heat it in a pan. Once your dinner's been heated, you can serve it on a plate and enjoy really easy. Dinner two the pinto bean and potato curry. 
You can reheat this any way you prefer. I recommend heating it in a pan on the stove over a low medium heat. I personally prefer to keep the curry on the one side of the pan and the rice on the other side of the pan while heating. You can do it in the same pan, that's what I do. I recommend using a non-stick frying pan with a lid so that the food cooks through without drying it out. You can use a small amount of cooking oil spray to heat it as well in the pan and a little bit of water if you need to. Toss the curry and the rice occasionally until it's heated through and serve it on a plate eat it enjoy it and that's it a really quick healthy dinner sometimes i just meal prep a few recipes and a few meals and sometimes i do all my meals for the whole week it really just depends on what kind of week i'm gonna have it just really helps me to stay on track with healthy eating you know when i'm busy i just uh, get into unhealthy habits i stop eating vegetables i get lazy uh, you know it just keeps me on track so it's one of the reasons i love meal prepping so much but thank you so much for watching just by watching all the way to the end you're helping to support this channel so much i really appreciate it if you did enjoy it give it a like it also really helps me subscribe if you haven't already turn on the notifications i'm going to be uploading a lot more videos soon so you're definitely going to want to turn on the notifications so that you don't miss an upload and don't forget to download the free grocery shopping list that goes along with this video i'm going to have that linked below for you it's on my blog it's totally free i'm also going to link below my ebook fast weight loss meal prep for women this week of meal prep is from that ebook so I'll link that below for you too. This is the fourth week of meal prep in my ebook. I've already done the other three weeks. I will link all of them below for you. So this is the final one from the ebook. I'm gonna link a meal prep playlist below for you with all of my meal prep videos in it. I'm also gonna link a playlist below for you where you'll find all of my videos that can help you to kickstart your health goals and get you motivated and give you all the tools that you need to get started. And I will see you in my next video. It's gonna be up soon. So stay tuned and I will see you then. Keep in mind that we're all different and so every woman has different needs to lose weight in a healthy way. If you'd like to follow a 1,400 calorie diet, you can go ahead and prepare all three meals and the snack for each day as I've done in this video. For a 1,200 calorie diet, you can have all three meals a day and just leave out the snacks. Just make sure if you are gonna follow a low calorie diet like that, that that is enough for you. For a 1,600 calorie diet, prepare all three meals and you can double up all of the snack recipes so that you have three meals and two snacks per day. For a 1,800 or more calorie diet, prepare all three meals, double up on all of the snacks and even double up on an extra meal. Keep in mind that all of the meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner are all 400 calories while all of the snacks are roughly 200 calories. So you can mix and match the meals and the quantities to get your ideal amount of calories per day. This is a weight loss meal plan designed for women, specifically women who are trying to lose weight. Men or children will need to eat more to lose weight in a healthier way. This kind of meal plan is only recommended for short-term use. Long-term calorie restriction is not a good idea. I always recommend starting with more calories per day even if you're trying to lose weight. Please don't eat under a thousand calories per day as that is not enough. Always make health your number one priority over trying to look a certain way. It's going to be so much better long term and it's going to make you feel better short term. I try to be consistent with small habits like drinking lots of water daily, doing a quick workout where I can, and eating vegetables daily. It's really about the small habits and being consistent with them over time. This all builds up and creates real results. Again, one of the reasons that meal prep has helped me so much at certain times in my life. It's always a good idea to check with your GP, your doctor, your physician, or dietitian to see if this meal plan or one like this is suitable for you and your personal health needs and goals.